Welcome to Licensed RPGs. Today we'll be taking a look at Naruto Path of Ninja, released back in October of 2007. Well, before I move on to the main problems, I'll offer a, of a few of my nitpicky issues with the game. One thing that bothers me about this rather meaningfully to the game overall is how much it hates trees. So I guess I should be more specific and say how much this game hates characters being in trees. And this is an issue that's pronounced throughout the game, ranging from Zabuza's iconic entrance to the arrival of Lee's teammates in the Forest of Death. I don't know where this hatred of trees comes from, or if it's simply a limitation to, of the 16-bit graphical style the game was, went with. I'd probably find the limitations of the art style, but it does ruin a few scenes for me, even if they are relatively accurately portrayed in comparison to the butchering job we got in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone in the Game Boy Color back in Episode 4. Outside of the tree issue, my only other nitpick is that the game is practically a sausage fest, like Naruto Uzumaki Chronicles on the PS2 that was discussed in Episode 10. In fact, the only playable female character in this game is Soccer, which is somewhat disappointing considering the fact that both Neji and Lee are playable while 1010 is not. While the overall amount of playable characters is the same, I'd argue that Path of Ninja is superior considering you don't have a timeline on how long you can utilize the other characters that aren't Naruto. But I guess it is time to move on to the story itself. Story-wise, the game follows the show from the belt test to the funeral of the third Hokage after the failed invasion by the Sand and Sound Villages. On the whole, the game sticks rather closely to the source material, so the dialogue lived directly from the show. On the whole, I'd say it's a rather accurate representation of the source material, but a few changes were made with scenes being added, combined, removed, and retooled to suit the needs of the narrative. An example of a scene being added comes in the form of your first three D-ranked missions, which cover taking out a tiger that has been moving in towards a population center, retrieving medical herbs for the hospital, and preventing Komahamaru from stealing a scroll, which is then combined with Naruto teaching his young rival a sexy technique. Though a more blatant example of combining scenes comes from the very start of the game, with the character introductions taking place in Team 7's training field right before the bell test. As far as move scenes go, one of the more obvious examples comes from the preliminary rounds of the Trinity exam, where the iconic scene of Naruto declaring his desire to avenge Nala's defeat at the hands of Neji is removed. And the most obvious example of retooling comes during the Trinity exams as well. In fact, this is changed made to the very first exam, where the characters need to gather information and show their courage to face the unknown the actual show. And this game is a test of your ability to perform the minigames associated with powering up your character-specific techniques like the Lion's Barrage. So this seems to offer us the perfect segue into discussing the gameplay itself, to be honest. Gameplay-wise, Naruto of Path Ninja is a rather traditional turn-based RG with random encounters, but it does include a few strategic elements in the form of having characters fight on a grid side, running into the Mega Man Battle Network series. Of course, the grid system here functions completely differently, with the strength of your attacks being dictated by which column and row you are in comparison to which row and column your enemy is in. In essence, this means you can boost your defense by staying far back and away from the enemy at the cost of offensive power, or you can increase your offensive power by getting as close to the enemy as possible while decreasing your defense. Outside of the grid system, you also have team attacks that randomly occur as well, which allow you to get in a little extra damage. Of course, the frequency of these attacks is dictated by the strength of your relationship with a particular character, which can be raised or lowered by giving them specific food items. As a whole, this mechanic is rather useless since it'll rarely come into play. You'll almost forget that it exists considering how you'll largely win fights by spending a small handful of special attacks like Shadow Clone. And the final strategic element is the inclusion of team formations. While the game does include various team formations which have various effects such as increasing certain stats or increasing your character's resistance to certain stats effects, but I tend to find the system rather underwhelming since the most effective formation in my opinion is to line up your characters in one of the three columns in order to give them a boost to their offensive power with an emphasis on the first column since it'll give you another boost for being as close to the enemy as possible. But on a more depressing note, this game offers rather little to do outside of combat since your only other options are to backtrack through previously visited areas for Miss Chest or a minigame that is only unlocked after you beat the game that can only be accessed on a title screen. And to be honest, the minigame is rather boring in my opinion since it's basically a variation of Whack-A-Mole, or a more apt name in this case is Whack-A-Clone, where you're giving points for hitting clones of Naruto and dock points for hitting anyone else, which includes Naruto's form when utilizing the sexy technique. Well, I guess I shouldn't say backtracking is an option since you're forced to backtrack through many of the areas after you learn how to climb on trees, walk on water, and destroy rocks in order to find the missing pages from one of Kirby Sage's works in progress in order to advance the plot, so backtracking isn't an option, but a necessity. For honestly speaking, the game is rather enjoyable to look at even if it doesn't come close to pushing the graphical limits of the DS. And I'd be a hypocrite if I picked on this game for having sprite graphics since my favorite tile on the PS2 utilizes 2D sprite imaging. On the sound front, the game can be a bit odd at times with actual dialogues being delivered, but considering how silent the game is for the most part when it comes to dialogue delivery, these voice clips feel out of place entirely. And in my humble opinion, the sound clips used for a dialogue delivery range from decent to unbearable. 
On the flip side of things, the background music is rather well done, even if the amount of available tracks is rather limited. Albeit my favorite soundtrack has to be when character or characters come to the rescue. In conclusion, Art of Five Minutes is a rather solid effort and easily worth a pick up if you are a fan of the show or of RPGs in general. And considering you can find copies for as low as $6 at GameStop, it is definitely worth a pick up if you manage to stumble across a copy of the game there.